I'm going to show you how to do one of the required A-level biology practicals, uh, this is for AS and A-level, where you're going to investigate the effects of a named variable, in this case temperature, on the permeability of cell surface membranes. Now the tissue we're going to use for this investigation is actually beetroot tissue, so it has to be fresh beetroot, not pickled, not cooked. Now the reason we're using beetroot is that beetroot cells contain a red compound called anthocyanin. It's a sort of purpley red colour. It's what gives beetroot its lovely colour. The anthocyanin is actually contained within the vacuole of the beetroot cell. So in order to escape from the cell, the anthocyanin must first pass through the membrane of the vacuole, in other words the tonoplast, and then through the cell surface membrane. Uh, in a normal healthy beetroot cell, this can't happen because anthocyanin is quite a large molecule. It's unable to escape through the membrane. Now what we're going to do is put beetroot tissue in varial, various conditions, various temperatures, and we're going to actually see how much red anthocyanin escapes from the cell membrane uh, so we can sort of try to work out the effect of temperature on cell surface membranes. Now, the first thing you have to do is get yourself some boiling tubes and all you need is 20 centimetres of cubed of water in each boiling tube. Right, this is at the very start of the experiment and then you're going to actually place these in water baths set at different temperatures. So I'm going to place the zero one in an ice bath there, okay, and then I'm going to place the others, the 20, 40, 60 and 80 degrees C in various water baths and I'm going to leave them to equilibrate, in other words to come to the desired temperature whilst I prepare the rest of the experiment. Right, now your next job is that you're going to use a cork borer, or you could use a chipper here, but basically you need to make yourself some evenly sized chips of beetroot tissue. So a good way to do this, you can see I've been busy on this one here, is to use a cork borer. Simply cut yourself some nice little cylinders of beetroot tissue. Okay, you'll see there are some I made earlier. Give them a little rinse a few times in fresh tap water will do. Okay, just remove any e excess anthocyanin that's leaked out from the damaged cells. Okay, the next thing you need to do, you need to actually blot those dry and you need to get yourself a ruler and a scalpel or some kind of blade and you need to try and cut yourself five little chips of beetroot tissue and you need to make them all the same length. So they should be as similar as possible. We need to make sure they've got the same surface area if we can. Right, now, after a period of time, when your various water samples have come to the right temperatures, that they've equilibrated, you need to actually go around your water baths and you need to place one little chip of beetroot into each of them. So I shall run off and just do that now quickly. Now, I have already done this. You're then going to leave that in the water bath for 20 minutes. Now, after 20 minutes, when you remove your water from the water bath, you'll actually find that they look quite different. We can clearly see already that there seems to be some kind of correlation between temperature and the amount of anthocyanin that's leaked out of the beetroot. But we now need to make that a little bit more quantitative. So for this, we're going to use our colorimeter. Now a colorimeter is a device that measures the amount of coloured compound in a, in a solution. Okay, so what it does, it actually shines a light, and you can choose the colour, um, through a solution and it works out how much of the light is either absorbed or transmitted. Now because we're using a purple, purpley red pigment, we're actually going to shine a green light through it. So I've set this at the green filter and we're going to see how much green light is absorbed by the water from, that was kept at different temperatures. Right, so what I've done next, I've actually taken the beetroot out of these and I've actually decanted some of the liquid into different cuvettes. So these are our little cuvettes that we're going to place in the colorimeter. Before we start we have to set the colorimeter to zero using distilled water. So we place that in there and we press, press the R button in this case and that should reset it or re-zero it. Once we've done that we can actually go along our range, that is the zero degrees from the ice bath and we can press test and that will actually give us a value of the percent 
of light that is being absorbed by the red pigment in the sample, by the anthocyanin. Okay, we're now going to reset again. And now we're going to do our second one. Okay, test. Okay, and we're going to carry on until we've actually tested the absorbance of all of our samples there. Now, when we've done this, we can actually use our data to plot a graph to actually see if we can see any, you know, effects of temperature on the leakage of anthocyanin from beetroot cells. This is the kind of graph you should get. Notice across the X there, we've got our independent variable, which is temperature. So we've got our range of temperatures. On the Y here, we've got our dependent variable, which is the absorbance or absorption of green light. And it's the percentage of the light that's been absorbed. And you can clearly see here that the higher the temperature, and we can see that, that means more red leaked out, the more, red light, the more green light sorry, has been absorbed by the sample. OK, now let's have a little look at this graph and see what this might tell us about cell membranes. Clearly, at the fairly low temperatures, between about 0 and 40, as temperature increases, we seem to get a gradual increase in the amount of anthocyanin being released from the cells. Now, this is probably due to the fact that increasing temperature results in more kinetic energy, which means that the membrane, all of the phospholipids in the membrane, start to move around a little bit more. The membrane generally becomes more fluid and more anthocyanin is able to just escape, just to diffuse out. Now, something a little bit different seems to happen here because above 40, we seem to have a more rapid increase in the leakage of anthocyanin from the cells. So if we have a little think at what could be happening about in this, this kind of temperature range here, probably what is happening is that the proteins in the membrane are now starting to become denatured and the membrane is actually starting to fall apart here. So all of the anthocyanin is leaking out. Now, up at the top here, at the higher range of temperatures, it seems to plateau or it starts to plateau. And probably what's happening here is we've reached a point where the membrane has totally disintegrated. The anthocyanin has leaked out until it's reached equilibrium with the solution. And then it starts to stop. There's no more left to leak out. Now, this is an experiment that you could use the same technique. You could actually investigate um, a range of pH solutions, you know, the effects of pH on cell membranes. Or you could maybe make a dilution series of ethanol, because remember, lipids and phospholipids are soluble in ethanol. So you could investigate the effects of ethanol concentration on cell membranes. Okay, in fact, there's quite a lot of different factors here that you could investigate.